Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Q again. And today I'm going to do a review on my 2019 Mustang GT. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on the video. I appreciate your feedback. It's greatly appreciated. Or let's jump into the video. So I've had the car now for about six months. And I just want to go over the things I like and don't like. And just go over some things you may or may not know about the car. And just tell you all what I think about the car, to be honest. Now, I have a base GT, so I only have two options on my car, which is the, I think the black appearance package, which gives me a black roof. I have black badges, and it has blacked out wheels, but those are, these are my winter tires right here. Black GT badge, and uh, the black spoiler, and the black roof, as you can see. And the other option that I do have is the active mode exhaust. And I can make my exhaust loud or quiet through the instrument panel cluster on the inside. So let me talk about the outside of the car. So for the exterior of the car, I really like it. Um, it looks very aggressive in the front. I got this black pony badge here as well from the 18 and 19 and also the 20 model years. It now comes with a splitter from the factory. That's a nice little add-on. My car is somewhat dirty. I just got a car wash too. But what I really love about this car is the blue paint. It's, it's Velocity Blue. And I think they only made it for 18 and 19. But I, I'm not sure. It's very close to Performance Blue. There's also another blue that's uh, a little close. For it has like four different blues. Grabber Blue, Velocity Blue, Performance Blue, Kona Blue. This is just one of them. This is my favorite shade next to Grabber Blue, but they didn't offer this in 19. The front end looks really aggressive, especially at this angle. I really love this angle of the car. One thing I don't like is this amber color safety marker there. That's actual a federal regulation, so it has to be like that. I just don't like the placement inside the headlight. I think the pre-refresh looks better, honestly. I'm not crazy about this LED strip down there either don't like these factory 18s but they are for my winter setup so I honestly don't care for 18 and 19 the tail lights were changed slightly this is more like a 3d shape right here it's pretty cool I, I like it no no gripes about that I have the rear backup sensors here too I don't know if that's standard on the GT or what but I don't know it must be included with it Rear camera standards, the federal regulation now. Trunk space is pretty big. I have a backpack in here, clothes, snow blower, tools, or a snow scraper. I have tools in here. The back seats actually fold down, so it can get the job done. I'm not using this to haul everything around. So now let's check out the interior of the car. You can lock the door by pressing these little grooves here or unlock it by just putting your hand on the inside. I think that's a nice feature. It's truly keyless. And this is where your lock would go. When the light turns red if the car is locked or not. And in here, like I put in my other videos, I do haul my kids around in here. One kid at least every day. And I can fit two car seats in here with my seating position. It's not a lot of leg room for the girls, but it works, especially on the passenger side. There's, there's ample room over there. So getting in the car, everything that I can touch, uh, Ford, they actually did a pretty good job about uh, the things that you touch, like the, the door handles. Pretty sure that's plastic, but it doesn't feel that cheap. It's cheapish. This part definitely feels solid right here to close the door. Um, most of these buttons feel really solid, kind of like the German cars especially the window switches. Those are very solid down here. Like, definitely feel like they were built out of quality products. And also another change for the 18, 19 model years, the start, the on button, that is actual metal. So that's, that's a solid feel right there. And I don't even know if these knobs are metal or not, but they feel like metal. The dash, I don't, I don't get why people get so crazy over dashes with the soft touch material i don't care I'm, I'm not laying on the dash or anything so i honestly don't care about that at all 
And this is some nice contrast here with whatever this is. Don't really care about that either. Got a Mustang logo right there. I have the six speed manual, so let me start it up really fast. Put on the clutch, the light turns green over here. So they actually have a a lever for the the e-brake. I know most most places went with like a digital switch now for that. I guess it saves on cost. I honestly don't know. But inside the car, the thing that I always have going, my Bluetooth is streaming with my music. So that's the most important thing to me. Is you can see my phone and pair with it and the music can play if I wanted to. Let me unpause it, turn it up. So for the most part, that always connects most of the time. Some days there are problems where it just won't connect for whatever random reason. I either have to like go through the menu, go through uh, either media or a phone and select my phone and pair it manually or go through my phone. And I do use the steering wheel controls. Sometimes when I want to skip my track, I press the buttons here or I always, almost always use the steering wheel controls right there. This is just so much easier to use. It's right at my fingertips. Another thing I change a lot is the, the exhaust mode. It defaults to normal anytime. Even if you put it on quiet, the next ignition cycle, it'll be back to normal. Or if you have it in track mode, the next ignition cycle, it'll go back to normal. Since it's cold outside now, the cold starts are kind of loud, don't want to annoy the neighbors, so I put it in quiet mode when I start it up. And the only other thing I really check is my trip menu right here to where I take a look at. I, I calculate my miles per gallon by hand, and I'm at the point where I can probably stop. So I'm averaging about 16, 17 miles per gallon. I drove a little aggressively this tank of gas, because it's been a little bit nicer outside. But normally on the highway, I can get 25 miles per gallon. I've seen as high as 27 on a trip to Toronto. But um, on a day-to-day -day basis for me driving through city traffic, I get about 16 miles per gallon on average. And this car does have a lot of other features too, like track apps. I turn, I turn off rev matching just because I want to drive other cars too, and I don't want to get too accustomed to always having the car rev match for me. So I, I turn it off myself so I can always know how to do it. Because there's a few cars that I do want to drive that don't have the rev match feature. And this is a good feature too. I actually like having it on, but I don't want to forget how to rev match myself. And then there's also the line lock feature, which I never used before. My car, my tires cost too much so I'm not going to do that. Not today at least. Maybe when the tires wear down a little bit. Yeah, launch control. Like I say, I'm, I'm never really using this stuff. It has a few features that they don't look all that great but they're okay. I'm, I'm never going to use these. I don't track my car. It would be fun to do a 0 to 60 time. I might use that one day but I haven't used it yet. You can see brake performance. It's just stuff I don't, I really don't need personally. And you can change the, uh, the screen here. Check the, the pressure on your tires. All this information here. But I generally keep it on this screen because it defaults to this screen every time I start the car. And that's something I actually don't like about it. Also, you got your, if I have the base model, I don't have the cool little flip switches. So here's how you change your steering wheel. Uh, feel right here so it goes to the cluster you can see it I always keep it in sport mode it makes it a little bit more tight and then next to that is traction control you can turn that off it has your lights and simple stuff this radio screen is kind of underwhelming for what it is it's just not that good to look at and it freezes sometimes too the performance is kind of slow like there's a lag when I skip songs well, another thing I do like about the Mustang is the community. Like I get a lot of thumbs up from other Mustang owners and just people in general. They they just like this car a lot. And also, I was parked at work one day and somebody came through with this uh, this blue registry Mustang 
group right here. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I got another one too. Like people just, there's a lot of people in the Mustang community and they're, they're all pretty helpful and nice. So I like that about the Mustang. So we're going to take the Mustang on the quick spin. The car definitely has some get up to it, but that's what you expect from a Mustang. That's why I didn't even put it in the things that I love. Because it's a Mustang. You expect it to be fast. It's kind of what these cars are meant for. Cheap speed. I'm honestly shocked they sell these cars for the price point they do. It's a lot of car for the money and base form at least now the shifter is pretty good in here too like i never miss a shift no matter how aggressively i drive and some cars i have driven like it just won't go in the gear you kind of have to ram it or wait for the rpms to drop i don't know what that's about because i've seen that in a few cars before too but this mustang i also had a 2012 mustang it was a v6 automatic but they're like a night and day difference that car it was it's pretty rough to drive it was very harsh jarring ride it wasn't comfortable at all it was fun to drive though even in v6 form a lot of people hate on the v6 but those are still fun cars and the eco boost is too like the only reason i really got this for the sound the sound is worth the price for me and it revs so high now that's also another thing they changed for the 18 and 19 you got a little bit more horsepower to it it's up to 460 but the torque isn't uh the torque is down it's like 420 pound feet of torque and compared to the Camaro the Camaro is at 455 for each one but going over bumps in this car everything is just pretty smooth like it's just a comfortable car I forget I'm in the Mustang sometimes if it weren't for all the, the pony badges everywhere and one thing that the premium has that this one doesn't you can get a all digital cluster you can get heated and cool seats and I love cool seats. Heated seats are fine too, but I have cloth seats, so I don't have to have heated seats even though I'm in Michigan. Like right now it's 45 degrees. And the other day it was like 19. It was it was so cold the other day. And I wish I did have heated seats, but it's it's not required. It's nice to have, but I don't have to have it. Also, the premium comes with the big 8-inch display, which is much nicer than this. I have that in my flex person just ran the red light it's all right though yeah, this this is a real solid car there's, there's no major thing no major complaints about this car at all it's pretty quick 0 to 60 in like 4.1 seconds for the manual 3.9 for the automatic I'm not skilled enough to drive that fast All right, now I'm about to get on the lodge with it, do a couple acceleration runs just to show you how fast it is in real life. Got traction mode on though. does is effortlessly just like that I'm from seven mile to eight mile one thing about the base GT it doesn't handle all that well just out the box like you can add some lowering springs and they can get better but out the box it's a little bit floaty but compared to my FRS which I use to benchmark it was, uh, that car was a lot more taut when it comes to handling. One thing about this car, it does have pretty good visibility too. Uh, much better than the Camaro. Don't know if it's as good as the Challenger, but to be a coupe, it has really good visibility. Like I, 
I don't have to have blind spot monitoring because I feel like if I set my mirrors properly, I can see everything around me. All right, so that wraps up my review of my 2019 Mustang GT. Thank you all for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and catch you all on the next video.